What if I told you that you could take your one pair of shoes and not only make them super unique and switch the colors, but also that they cover the creases and you can make it for under $50? Well, you can. And I did. I made fringe loafers. These things. These are fringes. Or sometimes known as kilty loafers. Kilti? Kilti? Yeah. These Santoni fringe loafers were the first ones that I fell in love with. And I mean, I know they're out there. I know that. But I don't care. I absolutely love them. They're my dream shoe. And while they are my dream shoe, um, there's a few things holding me back from buying them. Well, one, apart from the fact that they're very hard to find my big old US size 13 foot, um, they're expensive. Like $700 expensive. <laughs> So in the meantime, I'm going to make me some. I got my wonderful, beautiful penny loafers by Beckett Simonon. And what I plan to do is just slip my homemade fringes right in between the penny loafer bridge thing here and the tongue and make it held by friction. I don't want anything permanent, all right? I want to be able to switch these out and possibly do different colors. I'm going to give me some leather, cut out a few designs, dye them, polish them, and see how they turn out. They're either going to be really great or god-awful, and I'm betting towards the latter part. So let's see how this turns out. I'm acting like I didn't do this already. I did. I finished them, and I started it, like, almost five months ago. So sit down, relax, and grab some popcorn or something while you're at it. Grab a snack, because not only are you going to learn all this step-by-step, step, but it's going to be as entertaining as I can make it. Like a documentary. My journey starts October the 8th. Now, a lot of these fringe shoes are, like St. Tony's, they're more luxury shoes. So they're a little bit more on the pricey side, at least the nice ones that I like, the designs. So a great website to look at that luxury stuff is Ukes. I'm going to look at some of the fringe loafers, see as many as I can find, and get inspired. All right. Obviously, this isn't a fringe loafer, but I just think it looks so dope. Nice. It's actually really nice. I like that. Nice. Nice. Not, ooh. See, this is actually a good example of having it leather that is a different color, but it works. One, it makes it stand out, and two, it makes it stand out. <laughs> so if I do want to go with a close color to my shoes right here, I could do something like this. See, this is a this is actually pretty bad. I mean, it like points at the end like that. I don't like that. That's probably how it's going to turn out. Ugh. Ugly. A boot version of the, the loafers. Ooh. Gosh, see, man, I really wish I could do this design. I know it's out there, but I love it. I love it because it's out there. Just look up fringe loafer men on Ecosia. No Google. Oh. Oh. No, that looks like a real DIY. That's disgusting. This. It, perfect. Look at that. This is what we're going for. Okay, obviously my loafers aren't blue, but the fringe part could be blue. Contrast. Brown and blue. Best combo. See, this is a penny loafer. It just goes around. I do like the perspiration or holes in the common tongue. I might do something like that. That's quite a lot of fringes. I might do a little less. I like them a little more thick. Showy, maybe. Say we go for something like this, which was what I was originally going to do that. So this was a total waste. Total waste. Not really. Not really. So let's get some paper. So before anything, we need to make some prototypes first. So we're just going to use our shoes, paper, scissors, and of course, a pencil. You need to mark with a pencil the width of the fringes first, which is determined by the space under the leather band. So it's going to be about as wide as the tongue. It should be snug so it doesn't move around because if it's too loose, obviously it's going to fall out. But if it's too big and too wide, you're going to cause a lot of stress on the band where it's sewn and it'll eventually come off. And you definitely don't want that. You don't want to ruin your shoes. So after you're done marking it, fold it in half and cut the fringes to your desired width and length. This is how my first one turned out. They flare a little, so I'm not too sure if I want it like that or not. Oh, make sure you have coffee. Oh, so delicious. Oof. I made a really bulky one just testing out some ideas, but it took a lot longer than I thought before I was happy with the results. Ooh, spooky. It's spooky day. Halloween. So I came up with three different designs for three different colors. This is the more tan one. It's got, it's a little bigger. There's seven of these, so 
it's a little little bigger a lot of math is actually involved to make it the right shape that would fit this and actually make this end up in the middle and they're all even sizes oh that was probably the most difficult part but anyway this will be the blue one now i didn't cut them because for this one i'm not gonna cut the leather at first all the way i think i'm just gonna leave um it mostly mostly cut and then the green one is interesting because i left almost like a lot of those double buckle ones i'll see how it goes i'm not too sure about the green one but we'll see and so why it took me so long is because i had to find and learn all this stuff and order some stuff all right enough jibber jabber enough talking let's just get to work so to get started, you're definitely going to need a cutting board unless you want to destroy your table and your blade and of course your leather. This is 6 to 8 ounce vegetable tan leather that I got at my local Hobby Lobby store. That runs around $35 but they had a ton of coupons and I was able to get it at 50% off. It feels quite thick but it ended up being the perfect thickness. For my dyes, I have tan, dark brown, and royal blue from Phoebe, so you can pick these up anywhere. And for my green, I have Angelus. Angelus? I don't know. It's meant for shoes, though. I was going to pick up some royal blue, but then realized we had actually turquoise lying around. But I already used the royal blue for my suede shoes, so that didn't bother me. But what was unfortunate is that I bought the dark brown specifically for this project without knowing that we already had it lying around. <laughs> Really? Uh, yeah. Be be careful with die guys. Ugh. Come on, man. It's gonna take forever to get off my skin. And that is why you wear gloves, guys. Please wear gloves. You'll thank me. Aside from that, I got some cotton daubers for the dye and some paint brushes for the patina. Maybe? Uh, whichever method works best, I guess. Test out whichever one works best for you if you've even seen a guy use a makeup brush that only cost him a dollar to paint his shoes. To cut the leather, a precision knife works great for the little details, but not for cutting the leather entirely, especially 8 ounce leather. What you want and one of the best ways to cut simple shapes is a box cutter, which most of us have lying around the house, and this is great news. One less thing to buy. I do have another knife just in case, but the box cutter should do most, if not all, the work. I cut out a test piece just to try different methods of cutting and dyeing, and that dark brown is actually the tan, which is not good news for me, so I can't use the dauber for that. I was also practicing with precise cuts with little pieces, and I just decided, you know, I'm going to quickly make one. I didn't really measure much, and I used the dark dye, and, you know, I decided I'm going to make two and uh, give these to my nephew when he turns two years old, huh? Eh? Stick them in his little loafers. What a little stud he'll be. This does not look half bad. I mean, and it covers the creases. That's like one of the biggest benefits to this is that it'll cover any creases that you have in your shoe, which is freaking awesome. I'm not as hopeless as the Gurkha video. I, I think I know what I'm doing a little bit more. Maybe. Actually, no, I've never worked with leather in my life. So actually, I don't know. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yep. Just like the Gurkha video. I have no idea. Hopefully it'll turn out better. Let's cut the rest. Can you believe that this is just the natural lighting in this workroom and it looks this cool? Ooh. 
I love it when that happens because it never does. I actually thought I was going to run out of leather doing this and making a bunch of mistakes, but after looking at it, I don't think I will. So right now, it's just sanding the edges before beveling them, and then finally dyeing them. I don't have the right tools at all for the edges, but, you know, I never did leather work before. So we're just gonna kind of wing it, alright? Oh yeah, and I'm actually not sanding the actual piece, I'm sanding a scrap piece to make it look like I'm sanding the actual piece to look like I have two cameras. A little weird little things filmmakers go through to make it look good. Bizarre. Just let them know. Now you want to bevel your edges of your leather because it might start to fray or it just won't look as nice. So, unfortunately, I don't have beveling tools. Generally, you use this like little wooden rod thing and you apply friction to it. But another way of doing it is just applying a little bit of water to the edge with your finger and just getting a cloth and rubbing real fast, just applying friction. And you will get that almost glossy edge to it the more you do it. It's really weird. I had no idea that would happen, but it does. And actually, in this shot, unlike the last time with the filing, I'm actually doing it. I'm not fooling you here because you know what? I got a lot of these to do, so. a moment of truth I'm right about to die now of course you want to take your watch off if you have it any rings and please wear gloves I've already made that mistake today while practicing and I got a ton of dye in my fingers and this is leather dye and your skin's technically leather so yeah there's that this one this turquoise one is actually pretty good it's more light and I can do a patina a little more easily on as you can tell so, since the blue is the easiest, that's what I'm going to start with. Wish me luck. I started with the back using a sponge, and that didn't work very well at all. So, I just ended up using the cotton daubers, which work fantastic. They soak up so much dye, and I only needed to dip it in once per fringe. 
no need to be too picky about the back it's not a very nice finish on the leather and you're not going to see it but in case you do you want it dyed i made one quick pass through the top making sure it's as even as possible it really soaks it in but it'll darken eventually so what i did is i just went around the edges and i keep going around and around to develop a patina so it's darker on the edges and lighter in the middle and to make it gradual you don't need to be perfect and you want to go kind of inside I do another pass go around a bunch of times like 10 times and then a few more passes throughout the whole thing but mainly I'm just going around the edges I love a patina and gradients in the color of a leather so alcohol based dyes I found work the best for that oil base I feel it's gonna be more even and flat and if you wanted a flat base you just dip the whole leather in oil dye and bring it out and it'll be nice and even this is the best method for using a patina I found personally. So more edging. <laughs> That's what she said. And then when I feel like I'm good, I'm done. It didn't turn out half bad actually. So on to the next one and after this, we're gonna go for the green. Besides the Kelly green being much more vibrant than I would have hoped, the strokes are extremely defined, much more than I thought for an alcohol based dye. And I was not expecting this so any little mistake really really showed up and I made quite a lot this didn't happen to me on the practice piece that I had so it came as quite of a shock and I was not happy with what was going on All right. I try to correct my mistakes to no avail and it only seemed to get worse and worse and worse But at least it was just the green. What I was really worried about was the tan. The final part, final countdown, man. And to actually get the right color that's light, I'm going to use this. It's just paper towel because it soaks in most of it so it won't get so dark. It turned out pretty good here, so we'll see how it goes. Wish me luck. Actually, you know what? No, because I'm already going to be done by the time you see this. And wishing me luck doesn't do anything for me. There we go. Okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's just a burnish. Makes it look more handmade, obviously. All right. I'm done. Oh, these turned out so-so. This is my first time. Can't complain. Cannot complain. Did I tell you they probably end up god-awful? Well, it's getting closer to damnation. I'm gonna try acetone to take out that dark spot, but I'm not hoping. We're done. Almost. These turned out a little better than I thought, even the green ones. The blue ones turned out better than I thought. This one is kind of crap though. I mean, the holes are uneven. It's got a split down the middle. And it's a lot weaker and it has water stains and the water stains actually came from me dyeing the leather when there was water stains already on them the water didn't fully dry if I would have let it fully dry you wouldn't have these permanent stains but that's all right you gotta do what you gotta do and then the tan ones 
yeah, the acetone, it didn't totally work, but whatever, it's totally fine. I don't care. And the reason we're not totally done yet is because we need to polish these. I'm not going to add these as prices because you should already have a shoe shining kit with you if you have dress shoes or leather shoes at all. If you don't have any, then you should get them right away. So just like when you're shining your shoes, we are going to use Saphir Renovateur. This is a conditioner. Now this actually does darken the leather color quite a bit, but to be honest, that's kind of what I want, especially with these tan ones, all right? Then you're gonna need some shoe cream, and I'm using Saphir Medel Dior, the tan, which is actually what I use on my loafers, but we're only gonna use that on the tan ones to kind of give it a nice richer color. And for the rest, we're gonna use the neutral color. And then we're gonna use waxes because these don't crease. So we don't have to worry about them cracking if we shine them too much. If it's not dark enough, I'll use this more burgundy color for the tan ones, but I'll also use this. This is Mirror Gloss by Saphir. And this is specifically super concentrated and you use for the toe caps and anywhere where you want a really, really good mirror shine. And this is a neutral. And then of course, you're gonna need a horsehair brush to buff all this out. All right guys, we're almost done. Let's get the polishing. Okay, let's break it down and see how they've held up because I finished them and been wearing them for exactly three months to this day. Now the conditioner really darkened the tan ones, but they turned out perfect being darker. So now there's less contrast and they're not as loud. Now these blue ones are actually not the same as the originals. <laughs> 
they got damaged in the rain, which really pisses me off because that's a whole damn point of waxes is to protect the leather from water. So I redid these, it only took me an hour and I made sure to really seal the wax and the polish and I made the cuts a little deeper so they flare. But the problem is because I used the clear mirror wax to shine these, it cracked a little bit here because it's so strong. Oh well. Now the green ones. Oh boy. These are definitely not for everybody. And I know my boy Vladimir is probably shaking his head right now with these shoes. <sighs> I'm so sorry, bro. <laughs> but no, his shoe game is strong, guys. Go check his channel out. Amazing. I did find a use for these, though. I wore them for Christmas Eve with my outfit, so it actually wasn't a total loss. I mean, the color's gorgeous, let's be honest. And with these outfits, I mainly try to match the shoes with the rest of the ensemble. I wore all brown and beige tones for the tan shoes, and a blue and brown themed outfit for the blue and brown shoes, naturally. And a brown and green outfit to go with you guessed it, brown and green. And actually guys, would you like to see a video on how to style dual colored shoes? Comment down below and let me know if you guys would like that. You can be more bold with your outfit with the tan monochromatic fringe shoes, but just be careful not to overdo it with the dual colored shoes. Now, I would nearly took it over the edge with these patterned pants. Ooh. So the real question though, how do they actually perform? Well, because the fact that it's held by friction and gravity and the instep of your foot is actually higher on the inside of your foot than the outside, they do tend to slide down a little bit when you wear them and you're walking, they tend to do that. So every once in a while, I have to go and adjust them, which can get pretty annoying, but not annoying enough to where I don't wear them. I've been wearing these ever since I made them, mainly the tan ones. Those are my favorite. They look cool. Well, I think they do. They cover your creases. And it's like having three shoes for the price of one, pretty much. I mean, come on. So if you guys want to go and try this project out for yourselves, which I totally recommend, working with leather I found to be so relaxing, meditative, and wonderful, I'll have these beautiful Becca Simonon loafers linked in the description below so you guys can go check it out and get started. And it is an affiliate link, so wherever you purchase from Becca Simonon through that link, I get a small percentage of at no extra cost to you, and it helps support this channel. So go and try it. This project is super cheap to do. It only cost me like $45, and I still have a lot of leather and dye left to do even more projects with. So go and try it and have fun. So regardless of what you guys think about these, I mean, if you love them or hate them, you know what I think about these? I think they're crispy. Ooh, we're almost at 2,000 subs, boy. Ooh, let's get there. Let's get there. Help me get there. Share this, man. I'm telling you, I can't keep up with this. <laughs> the problems and benefits of having a cat. Okay, get off. Love you, buddy.